All right, this is Steve Caviedes with the Duopoly Report. We've got some exciting, fast uh, moving and breaking news. Uh, I'm doing this thing late night to get in tomorrow morning. Uh, we've got a lot of action, as if you notice in my background here, where uh, we got Capitol Hill in our background, Washington, D.C. The news that affects this state right now in the biggest way in the last two days is coming from news about the upcoming elections for U.S. Senate and for possibly for the U.S. House of Representatives in the state of New Mexico. Um, news flash. Well, it's not a flash anymore, but uh, a couple days ago, Udall says that he will not seek re-election in 2020. Uh, this story from The Hill, um, and this was recorded, uh, this story was uh, done yesterday, uh, at 11.52 in the morning, here's uh, Senator Tom Udall. And uh, Tom Udall announced Monday he will not seek re-election in 2020, leaving the Senate seat he has held since 2009 up for grabs. Quote, I'm confident that we could run a strong campaign next year to earn a third term because of all the work you and I have done together, along with my wife Jill and my incredibly dedicated staff. Udall said in a statement, but the worst thing anyone in public office can do is believe that the office belongs to them rather than the people they represent. And that's why I'm announcing today I won't be seeking re-election next year. Udall insisted that he is not retiring and that he would find new ways to serve New Mexico and our country after I finish this term. He also said that by foregoing a campaign in his third term of office that he was freeing himself. He was freeing himself uh, to work on legislative matters. Quote, without the distraction of another campaign, I can get so much more done uh, to help reverse the damage done to our planet and the scourge of war and to stop this president's assault on our democracy and communities. It is not clear yet who will step in to run for Udall's seat in 2020, though the race is likely to lean in the Democrats' favor. Udall won his first term in 2008 by more than 20 points and his 2014 re-election by more than 10 points. Um, and last year, Senator Martin Heinrich carried the state by more than 20 points to win a second term in the chamber. Hillary Clinton won the state by more than 8 points in the 2016 presidential election. Um, there is not a single member of New Mexico's five-person congressional delegation that is a Republican. The Cook Report, Political Report, a nonpartisan election handicapper, currently puts the 2020 Senate race in New Mexico as a solid Democratic column. <clears throat> so we've got Tom Udall, um, and uh, he's he's stepping down now, and um, and he he served uh, yeah, he served in Congress before he served in the U.S. Senate. Uh, and he's had a career that was, um, uh, I would say, non-controversial, um, that for the most part, uh, people have a positive opinion of his job. Um, if there are any complaints about uh, Congressman or Senator Udall, and I think especially Senator Udall, um, is that perhaps at times he was not vociferous enough. He was not the kind of person to stick him for himself in front of the camera he was not the kind of person to really shove an issue if it needed shoving. Um, uh, but at the same time, uh, he didn't seem to go too crazy um, uh, with policy uh, policy positions. And, uh, and um, he was somewhat pro-environment. I think he was also pro-military. Um, and uh, he leaves a record behind that I think is mostly good. Um, it, it could have been better, but one thing I will say is that I'll put a lot more pressure on newer legislators than older legislators. Tom Udall's from a previous generation of politicians. Uh, I think the times are changing politically, and I think it's wise for a lot of, of elected officials who've been in office for a long time and are at his age to decide that perhaps someone younger can step in who can deal with the changing political tides and um, dynamics um, more than he can. So um, to that, I, I say, you know, farewell, Tom Udall. Uh, so now the question is, 
who's going to replace him. That, that means he's not running for the Senate seat, which was up in 2020. That leaves a hole. So now who's going to jump in? There was already talk about Attorney General Hector Balderas, um, who made us he made a statement on the very same day that Tom Udall uh, announced that he would not seek re-election. And uh, Balderas stated that he was um, he was not going to make any uh, decisions on that day, that this was Tom Udall's day um, to be honored and to be talked about, but that uh, he's going to consult with his family and there will be uh, there will be a message coming soon. Um, and that would have been the news that I would have gone with and the graphics and all that other kind of stuff and talking a lot about Hector Balderas, but I have to cut it short because incoming now, um, incoming today, earlier today, we get this from the Hill. Luhan suggests that uh, he's considering running for Udall Senate seat. So uh, Congress Representative Ben Ray Lujan, a Democrat of New Mexico, suggested Monday he will consider running for the Senate seat after Tom Udall said earlier in the day he would not seek re-election in 2020. In a statement, Lujan said he would speak with his family and supporters about possibly serving in the Senate. Quote, I am humbled by the outpouring of support I've received today. In the weeks to come, I will speak with my family New Mexicans and supporters about the opportunity to serve our state in the U.S. Senate, said Lujan, who is currently the assistant speaker. Uh, Lujan has served in the House since 2009, is the fourth-ranking Democrat in leadership in his statement. He also called Udall, uh, quote, a giant in the U.S. Senate, and said Udall's, abs Udall's absence would be felt in New Mexico, in the Congress, and across our nation. Udall, who has held the Senate seat since 2009, announced Monday that he would not run again in 2020. I always, I always love those, the, the non-announcement announcement. Um, there's Ben Ray Lujan saying thank you. Get that picture up for you, uh, just in case uh, you didn't know uh, what he looked like. <laughs> So now we've got Hector Balderas, the Attorney General, who's talking about running for CD3, <clears throat> and then we have then we have uh, Ben Ray, Congressman Ben Ray Lujan, who's uh, putting putting himself in the news. Uh, apparently, he was he was flying over. The Midwest in a plane from uh, out from to Washington D.C. when Tom Udall uh, announced that he was not going to seek re-election, uh, and apparently his phone started blowing up as soon as he got within uh, cell phone internet range uh, with uh, people asking him to run, saying they would support him, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, ben Ray Lujan is has a high place in the in the U.S. House. Um, he has been a chief mover of the DCCC, the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee. Um, now uh, that's um, that's good and bad. Uh, the D the DCCC um, is the chief fundraising arm for the Democratic congressional races, um, and uh, and uh, and so he is keenly tied to a lot of big fundraising sources, but um, he's also the chief architect of of uh, some policy lately that's not been too cool. So, uh, for example, here a story from the Politico that just came out on the same day. I mean, almost at the exact same time that Udall was announcing he was not seeking re-election. And states the DCCC's new vendor policy kneecaps primary challengers. And uh, the DCCC announced it will not work with or recommend vendors who work for primary challengers, promote, prompting anger from the liberal wing. Um, and this is, uh, this is uh, big news. I think that uh, it, it came, came out from the DCCC. And 
it's part of a continuation of something that went on in 2018. In 2018, Ben Ray Lujan, Steny Hoyer, and others were going around the country and um, trying to uh, convince uh, challengers to uh, nominees that the that Capitol Hill, that the DCCC, that the Beltway wanted as their Democratic nominees. They were going around trying to dissuade them from running. Um, and uh, we actually have an example of that down in our southern congressional district where we had a we had an upcoming race in an open seat um, that Steve Pierce had vacated and there were about five Democratic challengers that were vying for the for the primary um, spot to be elected in June to go on to November to challenge the Republican nominee and um, and lo and behold, the DCCC comes in and starts convincing all but one, all but one of those uh, primary candidates to get out of the race. Only Mad Hildebrand stayed in that race, said no, um, but apparently that was good enough. Sweeping away that field, then Zolchil Torres Small comes in, says she's running. Field gets cleared for her to have an easier primary. And there's a well-documented case up in Colorado where Steny Hoyer uh, got recorded having a conversation with a progressive challenger and where he basically admits that decisions are made up in D.C. as to who the nominees will be, money will be forwarded to them, and that's just how the system works and you need to get used to it. And here again with this, this recent news article, you're seeing that the DCCC will even say that if you're a political consultant firm or something like that, and that you um, support a challenger to a sitting incumbent, or maybe even a progressive challenger uh, to a seat that uh, that's open, that is not one of their prescribed candidates, um, that you may have your funds cut off in the future. Not very democratic, not very cool, and coming right out of N. Ray Lujan's uh, group. Um, and uh, I think that kind of demonstrates a little bit about how much he, uh, much he cares about democracy. So this is very problematic. I'm not a big Hector Balderas uh, supporter. Um, I don't think I, he, he takes money from bad sources. I don't think he's done a great job. I don't think he's very progressive at all. Uh, ben Ray Lujan is definitely very problematic. Um, so when it comes to a more progressive outlook on the U.S. Senate race right now, I don't. I hadn't seen much uh, that would give me hope for uh, for uh, having an outlet. Well, come to find out that uh, about now twelve hours ago on Facebook, this popped up from Giovanni Alexander Hakani. After deep reflection on the years of service that Senator Udall has given our state and nation, I find myself both grateful and inspired. I feel compelled to consider how I may follow his example in service to my fellow New Mexicans. This is why I will be forming an exploratory committee to address the matter of a possible candidacy for Senator Udall's seat. Details to come. Who is Giovanni, Hakani, uh, Giovanni Alexander Hakani? Giovanni H Alexander Hakani um, actually was a Democratic nominee for State Representative District House 20 in the 2016 election cycle. And um, he took on incumbent, um, incumbent uh, Jim Dines, and, uh, and he got a little over 42% of the vote which was one of the best outputs a Democrat had ever done in that district over by Four Hills and East Central. And in many ways, I think that he, uh, his campaign demonstrated that House District 20 is not necessarily a, uh, a solid Republican district. And that got proven by uh, this last cycle, 2018, Abbas Akil runs, and uh, it was a squeaker that had to go to a, 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 a recount. But Abbas Akil, the Democrat, uh, beat um, Jim Dines, and now that seat, for the first time since I've been involved in, in politics, even when I was a young kid, like in 1990, it's been Republican the whole time, it is now in the Democratic Party's hands. And Giovanni Alexander Hakani ran a, a, he ran a good race, 
and um, I got totals that I don't think people expected out of that district, uh, which put it in play for 2018. Um, uh, Giovanni is, uh, at least from looking at his Facebook feed, that he's uh, pro-Bernie, uh, which would lend me to believe he's more progressive. Um, he does not seem to be following like the corporate Democratic line. Um, so this is another possible entrant into that race for U.S. House. So uh, there's at least one. There's still talk of other people out there. This is by no means settled. Um, I think that some of the more establishment corporate types are, are showing up, um, but there's not, much, uh, there's not much relief for the progressives yet. This may be one example. There might be others to come. Um, I think it's a great opportunity to have a spirited race and to really talk about the issues of the day and create some uh, separation and some policy clarity amongst uh, Democrats. So that's the that's how the U.S. Uh, Senate is looking. If Ben Ray Lujan gets into this race, and I have a feeling by the way that the news articles are reading that it is pretty darn likely that Ben Ray Lujan is going to jump into the U.S. Senate race um, and probably start off as the front runner. So if the U.S. Senate race in District 3 is, um, is up for grabs, then the big question is going to be who will be, the, um, who will be the nominee for the Northern Congressional District, New Mexico's Congressional District 3. And I'd like to hear your comments as to some of the candidates that you're uh, thinking about or seeing or what's being talked about out there. Uh, this is all breaking fast and furious right now. But as I tell a lot of people that when it comes to especially a big federal race like this, but even any race, um, if you're looking to run in 2020 and you're looking to run in a, a major party primary, which is in June, and there may be pre-primary actions in March and April of 2020, and we're now sitting at the cusp of April of uh, 2019, it is not too early to be talking about this. It is not too early to be working on this. It's not too early to be organizing on this. So talk about this is actually pretty prime. Um, so uh, comment down below as to what, who you think some of the uh, uh, potentials are for the Northern Congressional District when Ben Ray Lujan announces his bid for New Mexico U.S. Senate. Uh, comment down below if you think that Hector Balderas will get in the race if Ben Ray Lujan announces first. Um, and comment down below if you've heard of other names that are starting to sniff around in terms of the U.S. Senate. I think this is going to be really exciting. I'm going to keep track of this as time goes on. And unlike some of the other channels uh, and, and stations out there, if there's an independent candidate jumping into this thing, a green, a libertarian, or some other thing like that, someone anti-duopoly, um, you're definitely going to hear about it on this station. This has been the Duopoly Report with Steve Cabietis. Have a good night. Hey, thank you for watching the Duopoly Report. If you liked the video you saw, please make sure to click the like button. Also, hit the subscribe button and click that bell to make sure that you get notified when I drop a new video. And if you really want to support this project and see more important information that New Mexico and other people need about what's going on in our politics that is never talked about, please support my Patreon page. All the links are down below.